Welcome to Linux Desktop December Part 6, where I take a look at the Cinnamon Desktop. Now, like the Mate Desktop, which I reviewed yesterday, this started out live when GNOME moved towards the GNOME 3 desktop environment. People wanted to stay on more of a classic styling. But unlike Mate, this actually moved forward to GTK 3 immediately. But they tried to replicate the styling and look and feel of the older GNOME applications. For example, with the file manager, rather than using the awful file manager called Nautilus, which used to be better, they actually just made it better. They reproduced the old version and renamed it to Nemo. So yeah, it's not just the desktop which they've aimed to reproduce to more of a classic style, it is multiple applications as well. So let's take more of a look at it. So we'll start with looking at what the system usage is, and we'll see it's 409 meg, so yeah, not too bad going. Now I'm running at Linux Mint 18 with the Cinnamon desktop, and you'll notice I've done some customization here. This is the beauty of Cinnamon, we actually have more customization options compared to a lot of the other desktops I've reviewed so far. The application launcher has a text searcher in it, so I could type in, let's say, Firefox. Okay, well done, you found Firefox. Now how do I get there with the keyboard? Oh, well, that's the wrong end, isn't it? Okay, that's not exactly a particularly useful feature there. I do have to use the mouse on the fit as well. So yeah, go back and type in Firefox and yeah, I can open it up easy enough. Just hovering over a menu switches it. Um, takes a bit of getting used to, I guess. It's, I can't complain too much about it because KDE Plasma has that feature in it. Although on that layout, things are spaced out a little bit more. So moving the mouse to the bottom of the menu scrolls it down. I can also use the mouse wheel as well. So there's a few shortcuts on the left hand side. Now the more you add, the larger the menu gets. Add to favourites. Yep. Gets a bit larger each application you add. So how do I remove a favourite? Drag it off. Nope, go back to the application and then remove from favourites. So I've changed to the icon only task manager. That can be installed as an applet. Now you can see I was going towards a Unity layout. Now I can imagine some poor Linux Mint users going, no, the shock, you can't have the Unity desktop here. This is why we're going away from Ubuntu. Yeah, and I'll try and recreate the Unity desktop anywhere I can. So right click on the panel, then add applets to the panel. Choose from this selection of pre-installed applets, or we can add more from online. That's a nice feature. Reminds me of KDE that does. And there's actually quite a selection nowadays. As Cinnamon has been around a while now, there's been time for additional work to be carried out and uh, making more of these features available. And you can add these desk lits to the desktop. Again, it's a similar concept with the panel. There are more desk lits available online. So let's just try, oh yeah, I can add a desktop calculator. So select it and then add to desktop. Oh, that theme's pretty poor, isn't it? With the dark background, but yeah, there is a calculator there on the desktop. So yeah, so right click on it and remove it. Now I can add a clock as well. Now one feature this lacks is the ability to rotate the desk lids around. Now you could say that's a pointless feature, but um, yeah, you know, another desktop has that option. <laughs> Even if it is pointless, it has the option there. But I wouldn't be doing my job if I wasn't pointing out some of these things that are available and it lacks. So if I go into the settings, so I'll just take this route here, the desktop settings. We can look at some of the options you can change here, so you can turn the icons on and off. I wanted to go across to the effects. It reminds me of some of the effects you can get in Compiz. We can choose between different themes, and there are actually quite a number of uh, tweaks we can do on the themes. And you can download more themes as well. Brilliant feature. Well happy with that. I customised my system using most of the default themes, but I added a couple as well, like this teal, blue and black on the desktop. Seems to look reasonable enough. Shame there's no easy selector to choose between a light and a dark themed system. You can just literally go through manually and change each part. There's extensions that can be added. There's nothing installed, but uh, available extensions. Again, quite a few things you can do here. Oh, there's a composite effect there for the wobbly windows. Desktop cube. So you could recreate a lot of the old GNOME Classic features with the Compiz desktop. So if I open up the file manager, 
moving the application to the corner of the screen, we can resize to halves. And I've got this pop-up here, so telling me to hold control to enter snap mode and use the arrow keys to shift workspaces. Okay. So you get the option of halves, quadrants, and oh, yeah, this is different. The top half of the screen. So drag it down, double click on it, and that's a full size. This is the Nemo file manager, and it retains a lot of the features from the old classic Nautilus file manager. For instance, split screen. And I believe it has custom views between folders. So I say control two, and I go across the pictures and, oh, well look, there's an example already. So that's thumbnail view. Brilliant. So let's open up that picture there. That's the wallpaper. This is just a picture viewer, but you've got a few little editing options here. So just rotating the image and mirroring it. Go across the document folder. So open up that file there, config.php. So the text editor, which one is that? Z. Pretty much looks like a replacement for gedit. And you can see it has a variety of coloring here to indicate different parts of the source code. So the scroll bars are narrow. And I seem to have a lot of trouble hitting them here. I don't know why, I've not found this issue before in Ubuntu where it has narrow scroll bars, but it doesn't seem to pick them up particularly well for me, and it seems to lag a little bit on the scrolling. I am running it in VirtualBox, so I don't know, you could say that could be a factor, but I don't know, not so sure really. So I'm going to open a video, and I'm going to demonstrate a feature I meant to mention earlier with this searcher. It also finds documents as well as the applications. Andre, there we go, it gets there in the end. Go on, open. Just been a bit unresponsive. Well, this did work while I was messing around earlier, but it does not want to open this time around during the recording. I don't know why. Oh, can I just say open with VLC? I see the catch here. It is recent documents, not necessarily the documents on the hard drive. My mistake. So let's go around to open it again. Let's pause that. So are there any media controls here? I've got a thumbnail, and that'd be a live thumbnail preview. No, but that could be because I've gone for the icon only task manager. And there's no media controls there on the right hand side. I shall have to use the controls in the player. So I'm certainly impressed with the level of progression in the Cinnamon desktop. It's retained more of its older roots, but it's moved towards a newer, more modern way of working really, and it's I think it's quite good. There's a lot of customization you can do with the applets, desktops, and widgets here. Well, thanks for watching. See you all later.